Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, and this is episode 27. And so today we're uh, going to be talking about horses, we hope. We uh, have someone coming on later, but before we do that, I wanted to make a couple of quick announcements. We're still doing our, um, our wallet giveaway, our sidekick wallet giveaway. So if you'll go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, we will be checking that list. You have until the end of the month to do that. So go to YouTube and search Wild West Diversity, and we're going to be giving away these Sidekick wallets. These are wallets that uh, Lance Dubray, uh, the, the founder and the creator of these Sidekick wallets, this is a wallet that you can put on your boots. You can see it's got a clip on the back here. Nice strong clip on the back. It's got a safety chain that you can hook around your belt or around your boot loop. That way you don't lose it. You can put your credit card information uh, inside here. You can put your money in here. There's a zipper on the side where you can put your keys or your money or whatever. And then that way you don't have to carry a purse or you don't have to worry about somebody uh, stealing your stuff when you're out. If you're out dancing, you're out at a club, maybe you're at a concert or something like that. So be sure to go to our YouTube channel, uh, www.youtube.com, and then you can look up Wild West Diversity. Uh, we're trying to get our subscriber numbers up so that we can actually use our URL, which it will be Wild West Diversity. But right now we just have a, a coded number. So please go there and subscribe. Um, some other great news that we've got this week is our, our friend Cleo Hearn, our founder of the Cowboys of Color Rodeo, has been uh, nominated and is going to be inducted into the National Cowboy Museum and Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. Uh, and for those of you maybe not familiar, that's the big daddy of them all. That's the big museum up. They have uh, different... Uh, versions of that. They have uh, entertainers, which includes movie stars and singers and musicians. And then they have rodeo, which obviously is the, uh, the division and the department that, that Cleo is going to be inducted into for his legacy of uh, 50 or more years, actually, I guess, 60, 70 years of rodeo competition and the last 30, 40 years of putting on rodeos. Uh, for the next generation and helping those cowboys and cowgirls that are coming along. Um, Cleo was always uh, behind the scenes, you know, helping to pay entry fees or, or membership fees to the PRCA. Uh, because like we talked about earlier, rodeo is not an inexpensive sport. Another sport that's not so inexpensive is, uh, is uh, show horses. And so today, we hope here shortly, we'll be talking to uh, our good friend, Doug Smiley. Doug is a trainer for Tennessee Walking Horses. And um, as a part of our rodeo, he was our special entertainment because we all wanted people to know that, uh, that African-Americans were involved in more than just uh, rodeo. And so, and more than just Buffalo soldiers in the military and things like that. So um, there were a lot of African-American horse trainers, not only um, in uh, show horses, but um, in um, thoroughbred racing and, and quarter horse racing and things like that. So these are all horse related activities, other equestrian activity. Um, and then they kind of like it kind of fell out of favor a little bit. So today you don't see that many, um, you know, African-American trainers. And so um, it, especially younger, younger people, because they just weren't exposed to it or don't have the opportunity. So um, we'll hope that you will come if you're watching the show. If you we've got 27 episodes here, 26 previous episodes. 
You can go to YouTube and watch those shows because they get archived. Um, if you listen to podcasts, if you're a podcaster, maybe you uh, would rather do that. You can go to any of your favorite podcast platforms, Spreaker, iHeartMedia, um, Spotify, iTunes, Anchor. There's just all kinds of platforms across that we're involved in, and we have our, our show there. So if you just search Wild West Diversity, uh, you'll find us on those platforms. So we appreciate that so much. And then if you want to subscribe to our e-newsletter, we have a free and a paid version. And so you go to www.wildwestdiversity.com and um, you'll see it come up and you'll put your email in. And when you put your email in there, you'll have the opportunity to choose. You can either choose a monthly uh, if you want to or annually if you want to pay or you choose none if you want to do the free version. So uh, we're adding stories there. We're adding these interviews there. Uh, we're adding the background information and the descriptions from the show. And we're telling you a little bit more about the people that we're having on our show each week uh, because we want you to get to know them and we want to promote them so that people know that they're out there keeping this legacy alive. And so that's why we have these living legends that we bring on uh, to the show here. Um, and we'll try to get back to doing more some historical stuff. We've been working on that. We've got some, uh, some of our narrators are narrating some of our historical stories. And so we'll be adding that back into the shows uh, as we go into the fall. And so we're just excited to be here, to be doing this show and to be sharing this cultural history with people. Um, because like you say, we're telling those forgotten and uh, rarely told stories of contribution, multicultural contributions to the settling of the American West. And so that's what this show is about. So we hope that you'll share the show. We hope that you'll tell your friends about it. Uh, we hope that you'll watch or listen, uh, come back if you miss a show. We're usually here at 5 o'clock on Thursdays. We pushed back a little bit today because we had an unexpected issue early in the day with our guest. And so uh, we try to accommodate that as we can and when we can. So um, if he can jump on here, we'll have him jump on. If he can't, we'll, uh, we'll talk to him maybe next week or the following week. We'll reschedule him for that. But um, but the great news about Mr. Hearn, um, he's been nominated. He actually was nominated by Lane Frost's wife. And for those of you not in the rodeo business, Lane Frost was a great bull rider, a young bull rider who was killed actually at the rodeo in Cheyenne. And I think Abe Morris talked about him when Abe was on the show, our shootout cookie uh, bull, rider, bull rider and uh, uh, author that wrote uh, My Cowboy Hat Still Fits. Abe was one of the last people to interview Lane uh, before he was killed in a, a rodeo accident. So um, it is a dangerous sport. It, um, you know, he was a great bull rider. He had so many friends. He was the nicest guy. And um, the movie, there was a movie made about his life. So some of you may have seen that movie. Uh, but his wife is the one that wrote the, the letter of nomination for Cleo in addition to support from other cowboys and cowgirls across the country um, because, you know, they don't just let anybody in. <laughs> you have to be nominated. You have to have a letter of, you know, of introduction. You have to have supporting uh, people to support your nomination. Uh, and so it, it's a, it's a rather strenuous process that, that they go through. And so we're very excited that Mr. Hearn will be inducted. Um, he is 83 now and 83 and a half. He'll be 83 and a half in November when they do this uh, show. When they have this, they'll have a reception on Friday night and then they'll have their black tie gala dinner and awards nomination and, and all of that and, uh, and do the videos on everybody and uh, give them their, uh, their award for, uh, for being there. And then a, a, a permanent uh, exhibition goes into the museum uh, about them and their lives. So that'll be very exciting uh, to be a part of that in November coming up here. So um, so the other stuff coming up, we have uh, very exciting news coming up on September 15th. We will be talking to Oba Babatunda. 
Uh, he is a uh, actor. He is a uh, theater actor, a movie actor. You uh, may not know his name off the top. You may, you may not know his name. You may know his name, but he uh, has been in numerous films and television shows. Um, so he's a producer and he also is a little bit of a horse whisperer, we've been told. So uh, we'll be very excited to have him on the show here on September 15th. Uh, we'll be talking with Danelle Tempted. He's one of our rodeo uh, bull riders, uh, championship bull riders out of Oklahoma. Uh, he lives up near Oklahoma City and uh, he's won our championship here at Cowboys of Color. He's won at the IPRA, he's won at the PC, PBR and the PRCA. So multiple rodeo competitions across the country. Danelle's won. And still rides, probably broken most of the bones in his body, <laughs> as he'll tell you. So like we say, not, uh, you know, not a, uh, an undangerous sport rodeo. And, and it's, a, you know, it's kind of an expensive sport. We talked about how, you know, before you even get out of the driveway, you know, you've got to buy the horse, you've got to buy the trailer, you've got to have a truck to pull that trailer, you've got to have feed, you've got to have vet bills. I mean, it's that's why there are not more uh, minorities uh, invested in rodeo um, because it's not an inexpensive sport. It's not that easy to get involved. Um, you can if you want to. Uh, there are people that will help you and there are opportunities uh, if you're coming along um, to do that. And so um, just call us here, put your notes in the comments and uh, if you're interested in something like that, and we'll be able to do that, put you in touch with somebody and maybe uh, work that out for you. So uh, if you have the dream to do it, you can do it. There's always a way. But um, anyway, uh, that's right. <laughs> Feeding the animals is not free uh, for sure. So that's it. And the same thing, uh, Doug Smiley, who was uh, our going to be our guest today here, he is a trainer of Tennessee walking horses. So uh, the Tennessee walker was basically a horse that was bred during the Civil War. It was a horse that you could ride for long periods of time. It was a pleasure horse at first. And at first they, um, you know, they, the, the plantation owners had these horses, brought these horses in and um, they wanted them for, you know, they used them for pleasure. They did pull maybe a few buggies on Sunday afternoon or whatever. Uh, but then they probably began to crossbreed these horses because they had such a uh, comfortable gait. I mean, you could ride for hours without getting sore. And, um, and so um, Doug is our uh, trainer and showman as well. And um, every year they have the big show over in Shelbyville, Tennessee. And so, um, you know, trainers get awarded, uh, you know, best trainers just as much as um, on any kind of uh, other kinds of show or, you know, when you show horses, so other equestrian activities. So there are things besides rodeo, we just kind of have a tendency to think that the only, um, you know, a horse activity is related to rodeos, but it's not. There are a lot of other types of shows. There are uh, obviously cutting horses, there are quarter horses, there are Appaloosas, there are all kinds of different breeds, there are Mustangs. Um, you hear a lot about wild horses, you know, obviously right now, a really hard time because with the drought all across the, the Midwest, and the Northwest, um, with the lack of rain that a lot of these animals are not, uh, not had, getting access to water. And so, um, you know, it is, is a, is a problem. And if you have an interest in horses, there are lots of horse rescue type operations across the the country that you can be a part of and that you can look to, to, to participate if you want to donate money or time or even take in uh, a horse. Sometimes they'll uh, round up the horses and then they'll uh, have people basically adopt those horses and take care of those horses. So um, that's a possibility too. So there's a lot of horse activity. Horses were a mainstay of the Wild West. Uh, we, a lot of activity could not have been done if it hadn't have been for horses. Um, during the Civil War, more horses were killed than men um, in those early years, uh, in the first at the beginning of the war. Um, as the war wore on and as people um, 
had injuries and then they didn't have um, good medical support and medical act, act you know, a opportunity to, to have uh, access to, to medicine uh, because it was in early stages. And a lot of those soldiers didn't die immediately. They died from wounds uh, received during that civil war. They didn't actually die on the battlefield. They died after the war was over because of wounds that they got and, and bullets and, and infection and things like that, that they weren't able to, um, you know, take those bullets out or, or get to a doctor so that they could, uh, you know, get help and with those wounds. So a lot of those uh, men died uh, of wounds after the Civil War. So um, that's just some information that maybe you don't know. So we're always trying to share information here on Wild West Diversity uh, about activities and things that are happening that you might not know about. Um, as we've talked about before, African Americans have certainly been involved in um, all the wars uh, across the country, but um, after the Civil War, we actually had colored troops, uh, assigned colored troops who were the buff, ended up being the Buffalo Soldiers. And we've talked about those four infantry units and those two cavalry units um, that were assigned. And like you say, uh, many of those um, guys uh, were former slaves that uh, they chose the military as an opportunity uh, not only to serve their country, but to uh, move and try to create another life and to, uh, to be a part of something uh, bigger than themselves. A lot of them had already been separated from their families and things uh, when they were younger. And so uh, this was an opportunity for them to uh, participate and to um, serve their country and to be a part of, of a movement west um, to help protect settlers and to help build uh, forts and to build telegraph systems and to fight Indians and all of those kinds of things. So we're always talking about something interesting here at Wild West Diversity. If you've got people that you know that are doing something related to Western lifestyle, uh, whether that's painting, whether that's uh, maybe it's jewelry making, boot making, hat making, it may be uh, it may be ironwork, it may be a sculpture of some kind, like on the wall behind me here, you can see our Lawless uh, logo there, our L logo um, for our Crazy L Ranch that we have. And so uh, we hope you'll check that out. Um, also, if you'll go to Amazon, we have our new book, our new children's book based on our book here behind me. I, I got to get my... <laughs> I'm, I'm challenged here. I'm, I'm directionally challenged. So anyway, our book here, this is our Western Legends, African Americans from 1798 to 2009. But we have a children's version of this. This version is really for middle school and up and adults. Um, they're longer stories. They're two to four pages. But we have created just recently a, a children's version of that called um, African-American Western Legends Yesterday. Um, and that has 16 stories about people who lived during the 1800s and who lived, a, a, you know, outstanding lives. Uh, they were ordinary people just like you and me who made choices. And because of their choices and their actions, that they actually took actions, they lived extraordinary lives. And we've talked about two or three of them on this show. Uh, Kathy Williams, the only documented female Buffalo soldier, uh, Aunt Riddy, who bought land and, um, and, and hit her neighbor in the head with a hammer. <laughs> when she thought he was trying to steal her land. Uh, we talked about uh, our Buffalo Soldiers. We talked about uh, Bass Reeves. And uh, we talked about uh, Bose Eichard, who worked for the Good Night Loving uh, Trail and uh, for the Good Night Loving team. And they, uh, they rode cattle up and down the Good Night Loving Trail. They created one of the trails out of Fort Worth up into Kansas and then on into Chicago and Illinois where they drove the cattle because after the Civil War, a lot of the cattle just ran free. While people were off fighting in the war, they just left their farms, their ranches, uh, cattle escaped, they got out on the plains. There wasn't a lot of fences back then. It was open range, open territory. 
And so there were hundreds of thousands of heads of cattle here in Texas after the Civil War or what was is now Texas. And so um, people started gathering those cattle up and driving those cattle north uh, for food so that they could sell them in the restaurants and uh, to the restaurants and places in Chicago and New York and, and other places uh, north of the Red River, basically. But it was a long, hard drive and it was dusty and it was dangerous and there were stampedes and there were bandits and there were Indians who were all kinds of uh, things, uh, you know, much less, you know, water, huh, not having enough water or, um, you know, snakes and <laughs> tarantulas and, and uh, scorpions and all kinds of, you know, uh, critters that were out there, mountain lions, uh, you know, other things like that, uh, bobcats, things like that, that uh, were always uh, wolves. They were always chasing the cattle. And so you had to protect cattle. And uh, uh, to be a cowboy was not an easy job in those early days. But even that name, see, cowboy, there was a uh, there was the horse boy, there was the cabin boy, there was the water boy, then there was the cowboy. So that was the guy that took care of cattle and basically um, African American, you know, who took care of cattle. And so in the early days, it was not necessarily, um, you know, a hero type of word. It, it was a word used uh, more in a derogatory way, but um, people came along and the movies came along and they love these stories and so took a lot of these stories and uh, made these stories, these true life stories uh, into movies. And most of those movies were played by white characters, uh, even if they were African-American or Hispanic or Native American. And so, um, so we're here to bust those myths. We're here to tell these true stories of uh, African-Americans, Hispanic, Native Americans, and Europeans who participated in the settling of the West that created these towns all across the Western United States. We consider the West anything west of the Mississippi River, anything on the other side of the Mississippi River is considered the East, and obviously we have the North and the South. Um, and that line usually is considered to be the Mason-Dixon line, you know, over in the south across uh, Texas and here. It's the Red River, Oklahoma, and into Colorado. Excuse me. It's mountains. <coughs> Excuse me. And things like that. So uh, there is a, a one of the roads that go across there. I think Route 66. People have probably heard about Route 66, or maybe you've been in a diner on Route 66, but that was a road that went all the way across uh, uh, through the states. And um, a lot of people still take that route, can still take that route today and uh, travel and see the, uh, see the American country. And so um, we're proud to tell those stories. We're proud to bring people on and talk to them about what they're doing, um, to let them share with you, our watchers and our listeners, um, about this great Western legacy that we all are a collective part of. Um, it's a collective history. And, um, you know, all of us had a part in it. We, we see um, all of these different cultures in our lives today. It may be in the food we eat. It may be in the mu music that we listen to. It may be in our uh, street signs. It may be in our cities and towns, the names of our cities and towns. Um, all of those things are there, and you can see that uh, Hispanic um, influence. You can see the Native American influence. You can see the European influence. Maybe it's Italian. Maybe it's Greek. Maybe it's uh, Germany, Germans. Maybe it's Swedes. Maybe it's Austri Austrians, um, Africans, you know, uh, Asian. All across the board, we have. Um, things that we've incorporated into our life from different cultures that enhance our lives. You know, we, the, it, if it's the food, it enhances our lives there, our pleasure and our uh, nutrition maybe. If, um, if it's music, you know, it lifts our spirits. And art, it may be art, um, because art and music and things like that, they break down barriers. They, it doesn't matter about what language you speak. You can look at a piece of art. You can listen to music and you can be touched by that music and it doesn't matter what your language is. Um, so art and those things, there's my buddy. Um, 
those are the things that make our life important. Uh, one of the other things that makes our life important is animals. And for those of us in the Western lifestyle, uh, it's horses. It's all about horses. We talked earlier about our friend Cleo Hearn. For Cleo, it was all about horses. He was an African-American kid that should have played baseball, but he fell in love with horses and he was willing to do whatever he had to do to be around the horses. And so um, he joined the, the PRCA in 1959 and he's 83 today. So he's been a member of the PRCA since 1959. That's a pretty long time. And really the first African-American. So here is my friend, my friend, Doug Smiley. So, so glad for you to join us today, Doug. And we're going to be talking about how you got involved with horses. So tell us a little bit about what's going on with you today. Can you hear me? I think he does. I know he's on. Can you hear me, Doug? Can you hear me? No? I don't think he can hear me. I can... He's getting on there. Hang on just a minute. We'll, <laughs> we'll get this. Not yet. Okay. So check sound. We're doing a sound check here. And then we'll Doug will be joining us shortly. So as I mentioned, Doug is a, a horse trainer. And, uh, and he's going to tell us why he likes uh, Tennessee walking horses, maybe rather than quarter horses or <laughs> some other kind of horse breed. And uh, we'll catch up with him. And so uh, we're checking all of our sound and stuff here. So we'll work this out in just a second. But if y'all are watching, if you're listening to this recorded session, um, we are checking all of our sound and we'll be uh, right back on. But um, keep uh, watching and keep listening. And uh, we appreciate you coming here and watching the Wild West Diversity Show. We appreciate you going to our YouTube channel and subscribing. Um, and you can get notifications so that you can come there and get notified when we have another show coming up. But we are here every Thursday at 5 uh, p.m. Usually we're doing a little bit later today so that we can accommodate our guests. And um, that's the thing about it. Sometimes with technology, you just have to figure it out. You have to work it out. <laughs> and sometimes it works like it's supposed to, and sometimes it doesn't work quite so well. But we'll, uh, we'll get it figured out so that we can jump on here in a minute, jump back on with us. And... Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll give us a few seconds. Uh, producer is working in the background to try to, to get them back up and on. And so we'll uh, do that. And in the meantime, I'll entertain y'all somehow. I guess I could, I guess I could sing y'all a song or something like that. I probably haven't sang on this show yet. I'll have to, we'll have to get us a, We'll have to get you a, get us a theme song for Wild West Diversity. We've got a Buffalo Soldier theme song, and so uh, we'll be playing that for y'all shortly. But um, we appreciate y'all uh, watching the show, listening to the show. If you've got friends that like Western history, that like rodeo, that like cowboys or Indians or any of that, um, please ask them to watch the show, join the show, to check us out. You can find us on LinkedIn. You, you can guys can hear me okay? Now we got him. There he is. <laughs> Good afternoon. Take a deep breath and join us. So we're so glad you're here today, right. Doug. So and we lost him again. We had him, but we lost him. <laughs> He'll be back in just a second, we hope. So, um, but anyway, like I say, we appreciate you watching. You can watch the live stream on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, uh, across platforms. Once the show is over with, it archives to our YouTube channel. And so now we're hoping we got you. Can you hear me, Doug? I can see you. You look good. I could hear you for a minute. I think Russ said he can hear you now, maybe. 
You test one, two, three. You got a good picture. So I think he can hear us, but we can't hear him for some reason. Nope, not a, not oh. able to hear you guys. The, uh, oh, you can't It's hear just us? thinking the other, we can the hear other you text, now. the other video box is is buffering, I guess, okay. if you will. I don't know if I should be able to see someone or not. Yeah, you should be able to see Liz. All right. Well, we can hear you. Yeah, so that's I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't see Liz. It's just a black a box. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave out and come back in. Okay. Oh, oh wait. Now I just switched sides that time. Can you see me now? Are you still got a black box? You want to go out and come back in? All right. We're trying to go out and come back in. But we'll get this figured out. So. Um, we appreciate y'all staying with us. You'll be uh, you'll be uh, glad that you stayed there uh, because uh, Doug's a very smart guy and he's uh, does a lot of stuff for the community. Does a lot of work with kids. He's worked with kids uh, uh, football related programs as well as horse related programs. And so we really are excited to be talking to him and catching up today. Can you see me now? <laughs> Waving, doing the wave for. Okay, well, it looks like we're at about our 30 minute limit. So that's our show limit. So uh, I will uh, go ahead and close out this show. And then basically, what we'll do is we'll get with Doug. We'll have him on again maybe next week or the following week. But we appreciate you so much watching and listening. Check us out at wildwestdiversity.com. And we'll see you on the trail. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail.